the vital role that campaigns and elections play in the battle of ideas. We'll explore that and more on today's edition of Life Matters. Brian Johnston is the Western Director of the National Right to Life Committee. He has served in many capacities while advocating for innocent lives. As California Commissioner on Aging, as Chairman of the California Pro-Life Council, on the board of the National Legal Center for the Medically Dependent and Disabled. And now here's our host, Brian Johnston. Welcome back to Life Matters, where your program on the right to life, on what it actually is and what you can do about it, how it actually impacts your life. It's not some vague feeling. This is not merely a debate about whether or not you like babies and other people don't. This is about something much bigger that's at the very basis of your culture and society. It's at the very premise for your laws and way of life. And so we're going to talk about this particular right to life issue as it applies to elections. As you know, as a listener to Life Matters, we talk about principles that apply everywhere. And as we talk about elections, we want to prepare you for how to view elections, because elections are the one place where you can make a difference. By the way, when the Supreme Court addresses Roe versus Wade, that doesn't end abortion. It doesn't end it at all. In fact, in many states, particularly California, abortion will continue. And if you're fortunate enough to have a state where the state legislature will vote to protect unborn children, don't think this battle is over. Because local politics, when we're talking about elections, they matter. And you might have a pro-life member of Congress, you might have a pro-life state legislature, but Planned Parenthood still wants to get into your schools. They still want to impact the school boards, they still want their policies and ideas promoted and protected where you are. You can't just walk away from this battle and never, ever has it been the role of the United States Supreme Court, the USSC, to make up laws for everybody. They would just be the kings of our culture. That's not in the Constitution. If you believe that, then you don't understand America and you're not truly an understanding American. You need to know abortion's not going away. In fact, if you want to end abortion and the culture of death in your society, it's going to be up to you and starting in your community. And that's been the problem, is that many of us think that the Supreme Court's going to do it all. That's not going to happen. So get ready, saddle up. We're going to talk about elections. We're going to emphasize the importance of local elections. I want you to hear from a woman in San Diego, California, who happens to be on a school board. You will be stunned at what she has to say. In fact, let me just offer it to you very quickly. I'd rather get an abortion than have a brown child who ends up being adopted by white evangelicals. An abortion is an act of love. That's a statement by a school board member in San Diego, California. That's someone who's honest enough to say what they're thinking. But there's quite a few people who will get elected to school boards and they won't be out front as she is. They won't be as openly bigoted and willing to kill children, even literally brown children, as she says. They don't want brown children going to white couples. If that's not racist, I don't know what is. She sits on a school board up until recently. I believe they removed her. But she sat on a school board in San Diego. Do you know who's going to be elected to your school board? Do you care? Because that's where the battle is. And I'll be honest with you, this is what we've emphasized. That's the only place you can make a difference. You will make a difference locally if you will Declare that wherever your foot falls, you want good principles, the laws of nature and of nature's God to be applied where you live. You have to do it. And that means your local elected officials. So yes, school boards, city councils, supervisors, there's responsibilities there. And the pro-abortion organizations want the resources of those entities. Your local school board, city councils, and supervisors can stop them or they can give them resources. You're the one that decides that. Don't expect the Supreme Court to do everything for you. If that's what you think, you don't understand the times, you don't understand the nature of this battle, you don't understand the nature of the Constitution. 
The decisions of the Supreme Court are not going to end abortion. All they're going to do is free you up to have a voice. Will you use it? Will you apply yourself? That's what we're going to talk about now on Life Matters. And these principles, while we want them enforced, we're going to talk about what you can do in this primary election. And as you go forward, whatever state or country you're in, being involved in the local elections is where you can make a difference for your country, for your nation, and for those whose lives are vulnerable under your laws. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to Life Matters. They say sunlight is the best disinfectant. Did you know that California has a law in the books that says you need to protect babies born alive in the course of an abortion? But that law is simply ignored. The current legislature and Governor Newsom's administration support all abortions all the time. And they simply do not examine or regulate the practice even though our tax dollars pay for it. We need to shine a light on this cover-up of the abortion industry in our state. Go to CaliforniaProLife.org and click on the Light of Day Project. We need the facts about late-term abortion to be examined and made known. We need the government doing its job to protect lives. We need the Light of Day on this. Go to CaliforniaProLife.org. And now back to more Life Matters with Brian Johnston. Welcome back to Life Matters. We began by talking about the importance of your local school board. And I read to you a quote from Joe Lehman, who was on the school board in San Diego. She immediately resigned after her statement about abortion being an act of love, about her racist commitments that she did not want brown or black children to be raised by white couples that might adopt them and that aborting that baby was an act of love. She immediately resigned. And part of it is that many members of that school board were up in arms, as they should be and as you should be. You should know the positions. Many of your school board members will not be as frank as Joe Lehman was. She was not anywhere different than the woke culture you're seeing all around you. But many people are simply quiet about it. They're not quite as open, but they've bought into the woke culture that says abortion is a good thing, that killing a child is somehow an act of love. It's a choice that should be available so there's freedom, so that other children will prosper, so that mother will prosper and benefit by killing her baby. That's a very common mentality. Will people on your school board embrace that? How will you know? Unless you know before they're elected. So this is a very real battle. And right now, the California Pro-Life Council that helps sponsor this program is the state affiliate of National Right to Life. And every election year, National Right to Life and its affiliates want to know who's running for office. We want to make sure that our nation, our states, and our local communities have elected representatives that share respect for human life. That's an important predicate for America's freedoms that each of us are endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights. And the first is your right to be alive. So this is an important issue, and we question candidates before they run. And you probably know that about us. You can find out more about your state and local candidates if you go to, in California, californiaprolife.org. That's californiaprolife.org. Click on elections, and then you can see that there are listings of federal, state, and then local candidates. And you can put in literally your street address, and you can find out your most local of candidates. So we're urging you to start thinking locally, please. All politics is local. That's a principle that has been said for a long time, and it's a true principle, that your vote can make a difference. You know, right now, there's a lot of debate about ballot box stuffing, about mules who go around and collect ballots, mystery ballots. But that's almost impossible to do for localized elections because there aren't nearly as many to be counted. On a national election, on a state election, even a congressional election, they can play those games more easily because of the number of votes. But in your school district, 
maybe, maybe there's going to be 2,000 voters total. It's very hard for them to stuff the ballot box then because there's so many other races as well that are going on. If you know who the people are running for office in your local community, you can elect the good guys. You can elect those who are going to stand for life. And the way to do that, if you want men and women who will stand for life, think locally. And that's what we urge you to do. Think locally. Who's running for city council? Who's running for your district attorney in your county? They determine what laws will be enforced. And you're probably realizing, if you listen to Life Matters, that there are pro-abortion district attorneys on the state and local level that will intentionally not enforce existing pro-life laws. And it's legal for them to do that. It's called prosecutorial discretion. So your state can pass a pro-life law, as California has in the past, and it simply not be enforced unless you know that that candidate is committed to enforce these just laws. So who you elect is very important, not just on the state level, but most importantly on the local level. Your county DA, your county supervisor will be approached by the abortion lobby, by Planned Parenthood or one of its, one of its stalking horses for grants from the government. That's their routine. That's what they do. They live off of the government. Will they give that grant or will they say, I'm sorry, we, we would rather not have your services in our county. We believe in protecting innocent lives or protecting children. And we believe that parents should be involved with their children instead of having secret abortions and secret training separate from their parents. Are you going to have that kind of a supervisor, that kind of city council member? Are you going to have that kind of a school board member? You're the one that'll decide. These races are important. Again, we urge you to go to CaliforniaProLife.org. If you're in another state, go to NRLC.org and look up your state affiliate. NRLC is for the National Right to Life Committee, and you have a state affiliate in your state. I want to talk right now about the specifics of the California election. If you've heard previous programs of Life Matters, you know I've described the way your electoral system has changed. The California election system changed. It's not the election system. It's not the form of government that you grew up with. If you watched Leave it to Beaver and believe in the cultured, ordered government of that time, this is not that. If you watched Adam 12 and saw how the police operated under authority and were honored, this is not that system anymore. By the way, a policeman, you may not know this, but a policeman is actually an employee of the courts. He's an officer of the courts and serves the court system. Your court system is part of your form of government. That has been put under attack. Your form of government is under attack right now, and your voice in that is determined in your elections. When the electoral system in California was changed, the ability for local people who are not part of a centralized government system their voice was reduced. Your ability to work with those who are like-minded was robbed from you when the top two primary was put into place, and it empowered a centralized government bureaucracy. That's what California now has. That's why we have a Democrat party that is basically draconian. If you follow what's happened in Sacramento, California, the Democrat Party has absolute control of California laws. They are an oppressive and draconian government system. The Republicans that are there, many of them quietly, unfortunately, have just shut up. They don't even debate anymore. I've watched it, but they know that if they do debate, it's not just the Democrats that will attack them. The Sacramento Bee, LA Times, NBC, PBS... All of the standard media outlets that have also bought into the woke mentality will attack those good candidates. So what happens is that you probably know this. If any of you have, have studied the principles of war under Sun Tzu or any of the other principles of conflict, the goal is not to destroy your enemy. The goal is to stop your enemy from fighting. And that's what they're trying to do through this election system. That's what they're trying to do by silencing you. 
they silence their opponents. And if you accommodate them, they've won. So the issue is how can you win in this environment? How can your vote have significance? The first thing to do is understand the times. Understand that you're in a battle of ideas. If you haven't spent your time thinking about these ideas, then we invite you to do so. We invite you every week on Life Matters to think about what the right to life is. Our founders valued it very much. It's because mankind historically has valued the God-given rights we've been given, but it's in this nation that they were cemented and affirmed and aspired to. And that's why this nation was so blessed, and that's why people from around the world, my folks came here, my wife's folks came from the other side of the world, and America has been the land of hope and promise because the values of self-evident truths were made known, and the draconian centralized form of government was dismissed. You just might miss that, though, if you don't understand the battle taking place now. So right now, when elections come, you're going to have a chance to win locally if you understand those challenges. Now, in the primary of 2022, election day is June 7th, but ballots have been cast ever since May 9th. This centralized government sent out ballots to anybody who has a driver's license. There are ballots floating all around California. Very tempting for those who might do some ballot stuffing. But as I mentioned, on local races, ballot box stuffing just doesn't work. So what you need to do is hang on to your ballot. And then the way it's set up is the weekend before the 7th. From June 4th through 7th, that weekend, you can go to your local polling place. And by the way, if you have never registered, you can still go. Perhaps your grandma failed to register. Perhaps friends from church failed to register. They can go. You can look up your address. You have a local polling place, and you can go and vote. You can be given a ballot. And again, we'll show you at California Pro-Life who the pro-life folks are on your ballot. But you have that right because the state of California is telling everybody. Unfortunately, they're telling people who, who shouldn't be voting that they should go and vote. (laughs) We'll talk more about that later. But if you're a California citizen, you have that right to vote. And if you've neglected voting, by the way, it's notorious many Christians fail to vote. Many Christians are too heavenly minded, as the saying goes, to be of no earthly good. (laughs) And so they fail to register to vote. If that's the case with you or friends of yours, you can still vote in California now and Go that final weekend. So that's going to be from June 4th through 7th. Go to your local polling place. Give them your address. You'll be given an appropriate ballot. And you can register and vote at the same time in California. So if you've already got your ballot, make sure you go to CaliforniaProLife.org. See who is pro-life, not just on the state and federal level, but down on the local level. And then fill out your ballot. Hand your ballot in. You are responsible for your ballot. If you've already been registered and this has happened, sometimes miscreants will vote in your name. If that has happened, we are working with the Voter Integrity Project. You immediately take documentation of that. Because if you've not yet voted, don't let your vote be stolen. That's why we urge people to hand on to their own ballot, hang on to it, Hand deliver it for your submission at your polling place. You do have your own polling place. And as a fallback, you can go to your county registrar to hand deliver it or even to register the day of the election that weekend. But the fact is, is your ballot is your voice in our democracy. Please cherish it. It's because it has not been cherished that people have failed. Again, I want to remind you that when Roe is overturned, it's not going to change anything in California. And in fact, in the whole nation, you're not really understanding Roe v. Wade unless you understand what happened. And it's a twin decision, Roe v. Wade and Doe v. Bolton. The real power is in the conjoined second decision, Doe v. Bolton. Many pro-lifers don't know that. They haven't studied it. They don't know that that famous life or health exception 
which allows abortion on demand, which allows a doctor to kill a baby even if there's nothing medically wrong with that baby, that's in Doe versus Bolton. But if you haven't studied that, you don't understand. So that's why I wrote the book, Evil Twins, Roe and Doe, How the Supreme Court Unleashed Medical Killing. And that's available on Amazon. You can also order it through our website. And uh, we just want you equipped to understand that when the Supreme Court does render a decision on Roe, this is not over. Roe versus Wade and Doe v. Bolton unleashed intentional medical killing on your nation. And the Supreme Court is not going to prohibit it. Understand that. The Supreme Court is only going to free states, and that means you, you're a resident of these states, to have a voice in the laws to stop it, both in your state and locally, to stop those who are of the party of death, who want to use the law to justify intentional killing of a human life. So when the decision comes down, the only thing that changes is that your voice now has more power. But if you don't know how to use your voice, if you don't take the time to study civics, you don't know how your civic process works and your voice will be lost. So wherever you are in the nation and in fact in the world, in a previous episode we've talked about On Life Matters, how your form of government, wherever you are, can be impacted by your vote, but very often the form of elections limits its effect. So you must understand how your local elections work. You must understand and work with other like-minded people locally so that your voice will have relevance in your community. That is the key to dealing with centralized bureaucracies that have no regard for human life. And ultimately, that's what we're dealing with. That's what those, if you are following the cultural debate, the woke culture is blaming other people and want to centralize control in a centralized government system that fixes everything in a certain way and there's no debate. The government will control everything. That's the antithesis of America's freedoms. That's the antithesis, the exact opposite of the fact that every individual life has value. America's freedoms are built on the value of each and every individual life. Life Matters continues after this. You know, Life Matters is now heard on dozens of stations. If you'd like to help us with airtime, but also let us know where you're listening, text the word GIVE G-I-V-E, to 916-347-5644. It's very easy. It'll guide you through that. But you can help Life Matters stay on the air where you are. Text the word GIVE to 916-347-5644. Tell us where you're listening. It's very important that we be wise with the resources we've been given. Text the word GIVE to 916 916- Three four seven five six four four. You're a real lifesaver. Thanks for standing for life. Life matters couldn't exist without your help. That's text the word give to nine one six three four seven five six four four. And now back to more Life Matters with Brian Johnston. So if you're just joining us, let me remind you. We're looking at an election in May of 2022 in California that's different than any other election this state has ever held. Our state is being controlled by a centralized power, a centralized ideology based in Sacramento, whose titular head is Gavin Newsom. This Democrat party is committed to unlimited abortion on demand, paid for by your tax dollars, and offered to people around the world, not just across the nation. Regardless of what their laws are, we'll kill their babies and we'll pay for the transportation to come here and kill their babies. The state of California is under draconian political control by this Democrat party. If you do not understand that, you do not understand the times in which we live. I promise you this battle is not going away, so please spend the time to learn the principles of civics and what to do in such an environment. 
There have been times in history, if you've listened to this program, you know that Tammany Hall, they're the ones in New York that specialize this in America. They specialize government control and using certain minority groups. At that time, it was mostly Irish immigrants that they would lie to and use in order to have unlimited control. And Tammany Hall would even brag about stuffing the ballot box illegally. They did not care. So we are looking at a very similar time in history. How do you deal with it? Well, it's Fiorella LaGuardia that addressed it. He was one of the people in New York that said, this has to stop. Are you going to be like him? Are you willing to stand up and say, this must come to an end? He only partially stopped it, by the way. Do study Tammany Hall, because that's what we're seeing, that evil, controlling political machine that has disregard for individual lives and rights. That's controlling California now and wants to control your state, your country. That longing for absolute power is an evil thing. Power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. (laughs) The only thing to do is bring the light of day on it. You must study to show yourself approved. If you understand that the right to life is valuable, please study and understand what it is. It is actually a statement of political philosophy. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that each of us are created equal and endowed by our Creator with this right to be alive. And a just government must ensure these rights. That's why governments are instituted among men, to ensure the rights that God has given us. You must be ready to understand and apply yourself to this battle. So, please, if you're in California, go to CaliforniaProLife.org, find out how to vote in this primary, and in the coming general, there'll be even more local races in the coming general. But more to the point, wherever you are in this nation, go to NRLC.org, find out your state affiliate, find out how they're trying to guide and help the pro-life community in your state. This battle is very much with us. Abortion is not coming to an end. All that Roe v. Wade did is prohibited you and your state from speaking up. Once it's overturned, you still have to speak up. So please be ready for this battle. Please be equipped and again, study to show yourself approved so you know what to do and not just do emotional stuff. Do what's wise and efficient for your town and your community and your state. That's how we win back this state. That's how we win back this nation. Thanks for listening. Learn more about everything in today's show online at lifematters.life, where you'll find all the resources you need to protect life. Life Matters is a production of the California Pro-Life Council, the state affiliate of National Right to Life.